Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Paul Time Podcast. My name is Red, and I'm joined by my co-host, Alpha. Hello. Um, and today uh, is the 19th of August. We are recording this uh, this podcast a little earlier than usual. Uh, usually we record on Mondays, as you guys are aware by now. But today is actually uh, Saturday night because uh, next week I'm going on a bit of a, a, a trip um, in the beginning of the week. So I'm not going to be uh, available to record. Um, so technically, this is it's kind of a weird podcast for us because usually when we record a podcast the blog is already out but we're actually recording this before the blog is out so it's, this is a bit new for us uh but i'm sure that it will ha have to happen more in the future um but yes today is the 19th the bot the, blo the blog comes out on the 21st um and the this week's or the or when this comes out obviously this week's blog is about right-wing propaganda uh it's a, a blog that i wrote uh and it's something that i kind of it, it, it was it was a very the, honestly this week it was both for me and alpha has been kind of hard to actually find a topic uh you know sometimes you just have a lot of inspiration to write some weeks you don't so you know it happens um but i kind of got uh kind of got attracted to this topic because of the fact that it was something that we haven't really touched before, uh, at least in this uh, level. I, we kind of touched upon it when it came to, for example, the um, uh, the, the the blog about transgender issues, when it came to, for example, uh, misinformation, when it comes to like what what is happening in schools, when it comes when it portrays to, you know, uh, educate like education about uh, uh, queer people, etc., uh, which is you know always it's basically there's this whole sort of idea that you know they're teaching kids how queer people, how gay people have sex, and how all these things happens when it's not true. All, all they're doing is simply uh, you know being inclusive when it comes to teaching to to so kids can understand that queer people exist but that's that's it there, there's no you know there's no they're not doing sex ad at the age of fucking six right so this phenomenon has been described by the right-wing medium as they are transing our kids yeah uh and so you know this idea that like schools are grooming your children into you know being pedophiles or whatever uh, or that schools are pedophiles it's it's a very you know it's 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 crazy like anybody for anybody that's actually at one of those schools either being an actual teacher or being a student themselves um if they don't frequently you know or if their parents for example if it's a kid if their parents aren't uh you know aren't in those uh don't listen to that type of bullshit and they're actually like normal people um they if the, if those kids would hear that 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 idea in the first place you know the, if the, for the first time they ever hear that you know that that supposedly they are being taught in you know in their school that about you know doing all these different things they'd probably go like what that's not true the fuck are you talking about that doesn't happen uh because it just doesn't it's 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 not something that you know kids are being taught in schools because it just doesn't make sense and if you're like oh but there's proof and shit then yeah no no there isn't <laughs> that's that's not true just because the the crazy man on tv said it doesn't mean that it's true um and the truth is, there is like no no actual you know proof to that. There is there were some like pictures of these books, uh, about like uh these like sort of like sexual positions that like these two men were in, which was like this sort of cartoonish book, but it was you know disproven uh that th that those books were not in you know like middle uh, elementary schools or middle schools or whatever they were, uh it was it's a book for like teenagers. Um, and it, I don't even know if it was for teenagers. I think it actually was like an adult book, but it was like just drawn as like a uh, like a kids book, as more of like a as almost like as a joke, right? Um, but uh, people were like, no, this is this is in schools. I saw this in schools, and I actually saw somebody. I don't even remember, remember who it was, but I did see somebody like talking about how it they how they they had seen that book in a school, and then the other person who was interviewing them asked them like, all right, but like what's the proof oh i i just know it and then they ask like yeah but are, are, do you have you do you have you gone to that school and they're like no i just know it's like what the fuck what the fuck um but yeah regardless um the blog is about right wing propaganda and this thing that we just talked this little tangent that went on is you know exactly that um so it's probably the longest intro we've done holy shit uh yeah but uh the yeah. 
in the actual blog, what we start off by is talking about how exactly right-wing propaganda works. So right-wing propaganda works by first it's, it always starts off with small little things. It always starts with, you know, very small scale uh, sort of rumors, these little sort of conspiracy theories. They usually are, you know, uh, propagated by small communities, you know, very small people, you know, people that don't have much um, sort of political power or any power in general, just, you know, the, the, the regular day-to-day -day person. Um, and then when that, those type of rumors and those type of ideas, those like those fake stories, those, uh, that fake news or whatever you want to call it, uh, it, it when it reaches a certain sort of level, then somebody like, you know, somebody that has a more prevalence in the media will usually take that and be like, oh, have you seen this rumor that's going around? It's it's crazy. Like it's kind of crazy. Like, why are people talking about this? Are they talking about this because it's true? Is it not true? They they, which is something that for some reason media has been doing a lot. I mean, kind of has always done is this sort of is it true? Is it not true? Instead of like reporting the the facts, they're always trying to like stir up um, these weird sort of. Uh, I don't know. It's it's never. They're not like they're not concise when it comes to actually reporting something. They're, instead of being, they're like, all right, these are the facts now. You can sort of uh, do a you know your own research, or you can kind of come up with your own uh, uh, sort of uh, not solution. That's not the word. Whatever I'm looking for, um, interpretation of what they're talking about. They kind of do this weird like wishy washy sort of like oh look wishy -washy. at this look at this wacky thing. Isn't that wacky? Yo, and then people are like, oh, wait, is this real? What the fuck? And then some people will probably look at it and be like, okay, there's no fucking way. But there are people who look at this and are like, this is definitely real. And so then it you know, starts taking an, a whole new level. And then in a lot of situations, which is what happens, is that you know uh, politicians will you see that, you know, that story and will then use it um to, you know, in their political uh machinations. Yeah, and so basically using it as a weapon. Uh, the best example I can think of this is uh, exactly what we were talking about, like the whole transing your kids thing, which originally started off as a very small thing when it comes when it came to, for example, this whole idea that trans people were dominating sports, which is not true. It's it's just not true. There's no statistic that that uh, shows this. In fact, there's very few little trans athletes, uh, and so statistically, even if I you don't. Why. Even if I personally haven't looked at the at the number, I've not looked at the charts myself. But uh, just by knowing anything about statistics, I know that if you know if there's so little uh, um, trans athletes, I know there's like I think in professional sports there's like 134 or some shit like that. I think I saw that number at some point. So taking that into account, you kind of get an idea that okay, statistically there's no way that you know trans athletes can be you know dominating the sports because they themselves are the minority. And if you understand anything about, you know, hormones and stuff like that, you also know that, for example, when it comes to um, uh, trans women, that estrogen is basically uh, a huge, it's, you know, you know how like in sports, they take steroids and shit to like get stronger. Um, yeah. Estrogen kind of does the opposite of that. It's like a, it, it, like, like when you, like a trans woman starts taking estrogen, their muscle mass just fucking, it just dies. So yeah, this idea because that like because you are trans you are doing the opposite of getting hormones. You're taking, I mean, taking not steroids. the sports. Not yeah, the... so you're basically nerfing yourself, right? Like taking steroids is a huge nerf. Uh and so this idea that like trans women are dominating sports is just it's not true. Uh there is like some small situations where we yes, a trans woman has uh you know, won a competition, but it's never like, you know, never they're always winning like college uh like fucking athletic, uh, uh, I don't even events or whatever. Um, and it's it's always very like it's a very small thing. There was at some point like this uh, runner, I think it was like a women's women's marathon, and there was this like this runner who like got like in like eight thousand eighth five eight holy shit eight thousandth place or some shit like that. It was like an insane number, and like right wing like people were like freaking the fuck out that she was like taking over um, they're like the trans people were taking over marathons like the woman was eight thousandth place like what the fuck do you mean there's like eight thousand people in front of her how the hell is she winning that it makes no sense um and so there's you know this kind of idea that you know like trans people are a uh, a threat 
to uh, sports, which is isn't true. Um, for example, another an actual sort of funnier example is that there in I think okay, it's sorry for stopping you. Uh, according to what we're looking at right now, uh, two to five percent of the overall population falls outside of the binary gender norms in sports. So two yeah. to five percent. That, line, that lines up exactly with the general population uh, statistic. It's actually Fair a little enough. bit slightly more, uh, but like in percentage, like for example, in the US, 1.2% of Americans uh, identify as being uh, trans, I believe. Um, and so to, you know, so to 20, yeah. 2.5, that's not a big difference. Um, but and a funny thing is, for example, in MMA, there's this trans man, right, who in, you know, conservatives' eyes is a woman, right, who yeah. is absolutely dominating the sport. He has like he has like 11 wins or some shit. Yeah, if you can look, I probably, I, I know nothing about sports, by the way. I'm, I don't give a shit about sports. Uh, but it's it's yeah. like a crazy number. Like he, like he is like undefeated currently. And it's funny how like no conservative ever talks about him. Because that's he's inherently like a, a, a contradiction to what they they say happens, right? Uh, all or at least that you know that that men in in women's sports are uh, dominating, but the reality is that doesn't happen. But technically, through their eyes, that a woman is dominating a man's sport, right? Or in men's sport, a woman is dominating? Question mark. Whoa, uh, but that yeah. is that is the issue, so, in my opinion. So it's it's crazy that like. Yeah, that it's actually quite the opposite that they say because, like, of of course, like, yeah, that trans man takes t testosterone, so he's you know, in terms of like strength, he's on par with a, a cis man, and uh, the fact that he's trans and he's doing so well is purely a coincidence. It's not because he's you know uh, trans. However, for uh, recently, I, there was like this chess tournament, like a women's chess tournament, who banned trans women. Uh, chess tournament? What the fuck? Yeah. What are y'all uh, doing, man? Uh, a bunch of basically like there's a whole backlash towards that because people are like, what? So what? Basically, what they're trying to to say, right? Or what they said in a way is that, oh yeah, we're banning trans women from uh chess. From, from women's chess because from chess. That's, that's there can actually there the can be earlier. because they 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 were basically saying that there could be an advantage, which means that what they're trying to say is that oh. What men have a, or like m m people who were assigned male at birth have a, like an intellectual, uh, like advantage when it comes to chess. Like, what the fuck is that shit? They don't. Like, it's they don't believe me. I'm a male. I play chess and I suck. No, it's it's such like a misogynistic, transphobic take. It's it's. In, I was like, holy shit! What the fuck is this shit? It's all the right boxes. And uh, and also like trans men who like. Uh, took place in those events prior to transitioning right so when they still identified as as, as being women uh they're take they're t getting their uh, trophies and their uh their like championship wins or whatever taken away from them because they're not uh women anymore so it's a very oh, weird it's like a very it's 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 there's like there's a joke or like somebody that i saw which is like the um trans exclusion no trans uh inclu inclusionary uh misogynist which is yeah. this idea, like somebody that's so misogynistic that they are actually tr like trans allies to the point where when they see a trans woman or like when they learn that a person is a trans woman, they will now treat them equally as shit as they treat women just to, because they're that misogynistic. It's kind of the I same way. I hate you because you're trans. I hate you because you're a, a woman. woman. A better way to hate. Yeah, it's like, what yeah, the I've f seen that everywhere on, on Instagram now, like, as a joke. Uh, it's like, it's such a weird, like, vibe of, like, what the fuck, the, that chess thing is like, right, so you're banning trans women, but trans men, they're taking their championships away because they're men. What's, it? okay, it's, I don't know, I don't know what the fuck's going on there, but it makes no sense. And the the reason they gave was weird, was they're like, oh, we're doing further, um, we're looking further into this, we're doing some internal investigation, like, what what the fuck are you, you're a chess, you're a chess you tournament people. Can which tournament was that? I don't know, I'd probably Google it, it'll probably be the first uh, result that comes up. It's, a, okay, it's happened so this week. Okay, chess. But, uh, sorry, but let's go back to the, the blog topic. Yeah. Um, but this is just one propaganda, but... Um, the general issue with propaganda is that it's it's take it takes these made up stories, right? These it takes it creates panic. It creates oh made God. up panic 
And uh, that's the whole point of right-wing propaganda or general propaganda is, is using people's fears against them. It's, um, it's trying to, you know, captivate uh, uh, these people with these insane stories and it's trying to take their, you know, small insecurities, their fears, amplifying them and then saying, you have this issue, but if you vote for me, everything will be fine. And that is obviously how it's, unfortunately, it works for a lot of situations, but the only reason why it works and the only reason why all of this is possible is because of a lack of education. Uh, education yeah. is the number one uh, f deterrent, or not deterrent, so number one sort of combatant to pro uh, propaganda. Um, it's it's the only way that people can look at propaganda, if they're educated enough, look at propaganda and go, this is bullshit, right? Because they are educated enough, they have been trained to, to, you know, to be critical thinkers, to, you know, to think everything through before they just believe anything. And they look at something and go, Right, this doesn't seem right. Something yeah. about this doesn't seem correct. Let's do my own research. Let's look at you know um, opinions from both sides of the spectrum. Let's you know look at everything. Let's analyze the statistics. Let's analyze the the you know the research, and let's see if this is true. Uh, when you do that, it's you'll come to you know finding that you know you'll you'll be able to essentially fight propaganda because that's the only way to fight propaganda. Of course, there are like advanced situations where you can't do that. You can't do that sort of uh, self research because you know you might live in a country that is like in a dictatorship, which you know obviously. But that's but that's a whole different issue, which I'm about to talk about, which is when propaganda targets education. Yeah, uh, which is something that, for example, is happening currently a lot in the U.S., which is exactly what we just talked about. For example, when it comes to trans people or, or generally queer people, which is that. Right-wing uh, pol politicians are telling people that schools are grooming their children, that schools are um, bad for them, that they're you know teaching that God is bad, they're teaching all these different things which go against their Christian values, etc. Um, and so, what the best thing for them to do is to do homeschooling. Now, whilst I do think that in some situations homeschooling can have some benefits um but generally it's also been proven that when it comes to like socially it's horrible uh yeah. because like kids need that you know that social interaction with in schools to be able to you know just develop themselves socially and they'll be able to develop social skills etc and of um, course you have extreme cases like someone is being extremely bullied or something like that then you might think it's acceptable to shelter your child a bit yeah, but it's uh, the issue is that it is a niche. It is a very big niche. The issue is that in general, the only times that generations uh, can, you know, the next generation coming can, you know, be better than the generation before that is because usually what is being taught in schools does not align with what is being taught at home. Uh, this yeah. is a good thing in, in the sense that usually what is being taught at home is something that is more conservative, something that is, regardless of, even if, which is kind of my case, like my parents are very progressive, but they're even less progressive than I am because it's just how generations are. Each generation is always going to be, is always going to be a little bit more progressive than the last one. It's very rare where a, uh, a generation becomes more conservative than the one before, um, at least in generally. Obviously, there, of course, there's going to be some outliers and there's always going to be one fucker who did that shit, but... <laughs> But uh, generally, when I, you know, look at, you know, even my situation, I'd say that even though my parents are very progressive and there's also, you know, uh, left wing people, uh, left, little lefties, um, they still, I'm still more progressive than they are. And I think that they are aware of it. And I think both, you know, everybody kind of at, at home kind of recognize that as like a normal, you know progressive pro like progress you know what i mean like it's part of how how um stuff should be and uh, but when you try to first of all try to change schools to teaching what you want with uh you know what parents want uh first of all that's not really a great thing because that is that what we're taught in schools is not decided by the parents it's decided by you know boards of people who you know or uh, who study, for example, what is the best for uh, for children? Uh, they, you know, they're scientists. They're you know uh, high ed academic people who actually you know what they're talking about, etc. So when you give that uh, sort of uh, that job to parents, 
it's, you know, you're basically being taught nothing new, right? You're just being taught what you're already being taught at home, but amplified. Uh, for example, we talked about this in the last episode. We talked about Prager. Was it in the last episode we talked about Prager? Or was it the one before that? Uh, I don't know. I think it might be the one before that. It was the one before that. Like, for example, Prager U uh, kids thing in Florida is horrendous because now that, you know, more weeks have gone by, I've seen more stuff talked about it. And there's stuff talking about, like, there's, like, this one animation with Chris, um, with Columbus of, like, saying that, uh, like, yeah, like, slaves, you know, like, they, slavery is horrible. But actually, slaves, you know, if, if they, they are in a better place, they were in a better place uh, after slavery than if they were never uh, slaves, right? Like, like, slavery was, like, beneficiary for these people, which is insane. Excuse me, what the fuck? Yeah, like, this is something that, you know, kids could be taught in Florida that, you know, that, um, that, uh, that, that slavery gave slaves skills, Right? That, that is they, such a racist point of view. That, 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 oh they, no, slavery is actually good for you. You should thank us. And, and but the thing, the way they're doing what? it, the way they're doing it is like, is they're trying to not saying that slavery was good, but saying that slavery had some good things about it, and that the people who were slaves, that when they were slaves, that they had to learn certain skills, which when they started being slaves, they took those skills and made a life for themselves, which is bullshit. That didn't happen. Yeah, and these not people, how it worked. Most people died slaves. They died. They they these people who had all these skills, uh, never were able to make anything out of their lives because that's not how shit works. You're not you know enslaved for you know thirty years and then are suddenly you know put out there in the world where yes you might have skills but you don't know how to live in a, out in the world. So it's you know it, it, that's not even that doesn't even apply. Like you were a slave, you were an object. Yeah. You were not a human being. You didn't get skills. You had to do what your master told you, and you had to do it well yeah. unless you want to see whip, or the hand, or the end of a gun. So it, it wasn't a, a, a crafty like summer school where you yeah. where you learn bricolage. Like what the fuck? And it's like it's even if assuming that that what they're saying is true that they learn skills, which isn't. I mean, it kind of is. They of course they always learn something from it, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't call it skills. They more they were made to do something. Uh, even if you yeah. assume that is true, you're obje- you're again missing or or ignoring a, va- a a a very important point, which is something that we talked about before when we talked about um, uh, Prager U, which is that these people aren't able to admit that systemic racism is a thing. Yeah. So yes, slaves at some point stopped existing, but the issue is that. From one moment to the other, the system didn't change. The system was still still saw these people as slaves. So therefore, you actually, I'm sorry for interrupting you. You saw something after the Civil War, which was meant to abolish slavery. By the way, uh, at least after a certain amount of time, where former slaves had to go back to farms so they could have employment. Yeah. So they were slaves, just not by name. So it's. They were, yeah, they were slaves of money, essentially, then. Uh, so it's it's you're kind of missing out the whole point that, yes, they might, even if you want to assume that they learn skills or whatever, you're missing out the point that, first of all, they were slaves. So saying that, oh, but they learn skills, that doesn't make it okay. It, 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 it just makes it kind of even worse because you're saying that, you know, these people were... Uh, they were uh, pushed into having to do these things that, that now that they have these skills that they don't might not even need or, or want to have, right? You should be thankful. Uh, but it's it's crazy uh, to then be like, oh yeah, but then after they were slaves, everything was fine. But the issue, that's not how stuff works. For example, the the issue with that, um, that you know, the black community and that still has um, in America and, and they have been talking about this for years is that abolishing f- uh, slavery wasn't enough that that is not what should have been done uh, and the best example or sort of a, a an example that i can give so i can then explain this better is for example when it came to the holocaust right obviously oh uh yeah, this is a touchy th- th- uh, topic but germany did horrendous shit right you, you think and obviously they had to pay for the holocaust literally they literally had to pay for it, right? They they were made they were made uh by was it the EU, I think, right? Yeah. They they, they had the to the United Nations, not the United not oh, okay. the, the European Union, the United Nations. Uh, like the the Allies and Russia 
and uh, literally divided Germany into sectors that were under control by each of the powers. Yeah, for and sectors. also the, the Germans couldn't have a military, for example. The Germans had to pay tariffs, uh, etc. Uh, there was a, a whole thing with the wall in Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know about that. Yeah, I've heard about it. I've heard about it. You've heard about it. But uh, yeah, but like the thing is that what Germany had to do is called fuck. I forgot the, the term. Rep, rep, no, reparate, reparation. That's the term. Yeah. What reparation is is first of all, you have to recognize that there is an issue. You have to recognize that there is a systemic issue. In that case, it was anti anti uh, anti semitism. They recognized that yeah. they had anti semitism. They recognized that they did horrible stuff. First, they paid this huge compensation to basically rebuild uh, Europe, right? Then they had to sign documents. They had to make promises that from here on out that they would make, they would change the system. They would make uh, huge changes to their system to make sure that anti-Semitism couldn't exist anymore. Right? That they were that everybody would be taught what had happened. That everybody would be taught in a way to make sure that um, the systemic again. issues couldn't happen again. And so, and that is something that never happened in the U.S., right? Yeah. Is, is... No, I mean, like, you wouldn't think that the country fighting against these values would need this. But then again, uh, before the war, the United States president sent a, a particular letter saying something very bad about Jews. Yeah, so it's it's... That's the thing that the U.S. never did is they never did reprimand, rapper, no, rap, fuck, what was the word again? You can do it. Uh, reprimation, rapper. Shit. You broke my brain. Rep, the, the thing, the thing, right? They never the fixed the thing. Fuck, what, re, 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 <laughs> shit, what's the word? Rep, re, rep, reparations. Reparation, reparations, reparations. I really am bad with words. Uh, an action of making amends. Yeah, okay, reparation, right? That is, that's the word, thank you. Uh, all right, so reparations, what to, to what they did to, um, you know, not just the black community, but generally what they did, you know, when it came to slavery. Because it's not something yeah. that is simple. Well, all you do is set the slaves free. free. Everything will fix it, it, itself. That, that didn't work, and it's still... To this day, people are still, you know, feeling the effects of only having done that. What they should Just have remember, done. Remember, it was an entire system yeah. with centuries in the making, literally two centuries in the making. And the, the issue is that the system was never changed. The system was never, nobody ever went, hey, we have to change the system to make sure that, you know, these people now have a place in our society. They didn't do that. What they did is that they sort of let everything slowly evolve into a and into a system which felt like that shit didn't exist anymore right every they kind of just let everything flow the way it had to right uh, they made of, disco hands and expect everything to be all right so everything has slowly been getting better of course nobody's going to say that right now that we're in a worse situation than we were when slavery was abolished that's just the, you know a crazy uh take but it, the reality is that still to this day if you are uh, a person of color in the United States, you still clearly don't have the same level of life that a uh, a white person will have. Of course, as as always, there's always going to be, uh, you know, some people who, of course, don't align with that. But it's generally speaking, it's very rare for, for example, an immigrant to come to the United States and to be seen as a part of, you know. Uh, a society they always be seen as you know an outsider to be all these things so there's there's a lot of systemic issues in the u.s i have no idea how i got from how i got here from the blog what the fuck was i talking about <laughs> good question i also got lost i got i was we're talking about we're talking about racism all the, we're talking, all the time. Talk, we enjoy our side tracks oh god no but we, i was talking about how education I was talking about education in Florida and prayer you and there I got from I got from Columbus and then that's where I got the thing all right so holy shit sorry for this little sidetrack that I did but uh, a little very little quotes. but yeah like prayer you is an example of of sort of amplifying this misinformation right it's it's making the situation even worse and so what we need is for schools to always be aligned with what is best for everybody we need to always again like just like we talk about like with reparations schools need to make sure that they're trying to fix issues that they're not just 
no school should ever teach people to be conservative. They should never teach anybody to uphold your current values and stick to them for the rest of your lives and never, you know, do all these, like it's, it's it, nobody, no school should ever do that. In fact, our schools never do that. I don't, I've never experienced that in, in, a, in a school in Portugal, to the point where like a school is being like, no, no, you, you need to stick to, you know. We also go to public school. We don't, we don't go to rich boy conservative school, so. Yeah, but it's still like it's What's it's the advantage there. It's it's something that's not great, and schools need to not be teaching uh, what parents want. And the reason why, then, of course, homeschooling is even worse is because then you're not even teaching what a lot of parents want. You're only being taught what your parents want. Yeah, you know, by an, in, in an a, individual. A whole issue in Portugal, because uh, 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 like a couple of parents decided that uh, philosophy. And uh, uh, we social, call it a, social studies. Yeah, basically, social studies shouldn't be a subject because education comes from the household. Yeah, and it was even worse than that. It was that uh, I think it is all that all started with. That's something we actually that I actually mentioned in the blog uh, article is that it all started with uh, basically like that these parents like the kids were taught sex ed in school because most every country in the, in the eu is taught sex ed because it's like a normal thing and nobody really freaks out about it and let, unless you're these specific parents because they were i don't know anymore but they, they were part of some smaller uh religious group um and uh and basically their their kids were taught in uh in social studies they were taught sex ed and they didn't want that so they basically told their children that they couldn't go to, to social studies uh, because they were being told they were being taught sex ed. And when that happened, uh, of course, they, if they don't go to social studies, they're you know missing classes. They're not getting a grade in that class. And if you don't get a grade in that class in the end of the year, I believe the kids uh, were they didn't pass the year. Right, they were uh, held in the same year. I don't think they didn't. It's not that they didn't pass the year. It's that they failed the class. No, no, they actually did. They, they did actually. Failable. They actually did stay a year. Uh, at least there was like a brother and a sister that did. I don't know uh, other other stories other than, but they they stay they stayed in the same year because these parents just would not let the the uh the, their children uh learn about these things, which is you know, horrible. It's because like of course they need to, but then obviously. These parents are being so strict with these conservative values that they're essentially delaying their children's lives by a whole year because of some dumbass shit, right? That which I think in their head, in their head will basically be, oh, I'm fighting the good fight. I'm protecting my children from these barbaric views. Okay, I just, dropped, some, I just dropped something on my desk. Sorry for that. Uh, I'll have to pick that up after should, after the recording. Should we cut that? Uh, no, 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 no. It's funny. It's, no. Uh, mistakes we make mistakes that's part of life we do have cuts available i don't case. know but like we we're genuine that's the whole whole thing mistakes happen and sometimes we gotta acknowledge them and i just let my fucking pen case fall on the ground and now there's pens and pencil everywhere but that's fine <laughs> just, let's ignore that i'm gonna ignore that for the rest, the rest of the episode but uh yeah it's it's something that um is pretty bad and then doing taking those kids for example to homeschooling is just going to put them even more fixed into this into this little sort of cocoon right and there's like little uh, a, a, like little, little area right where they're like stuck with these values and they can never experience anything in the outside and the reality is that when they do go to the outside world they're going to be seen as these crazy people uh that have these crazy ideals right because they are just aren't aware how the real world is because they're you know taught by conspiracy theory parents and all these different shit and it's 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 pretty bad um but yeah and then that's that's how propaganda gets even worse because if the only or i don't say it's the only but the biggest definitely the biggest way to fight propaganda is education and when propaganda starts targeting education that it's basically you know targeting the only thing that can kind of combat it you're going to get stuck with a population that just First of all, we'll believe anything, uh, which is bad because that's how, you know, getting to like authoritarian fascist uh, regimes, which, you know, uh, people will just believe anything the government tells them, even if it out, even if it's the most unbelievable thing. In fact, there's a, a song that I really like uh, from Radiohead, which is uh, two plus two equals five. I actually did a, a oral presentation about this oh, one. Let's go. 
which is about a uh, George we Orwell based in this podcast, which is about George Orwell about this idea that like if in like the actual lyrics of the song, right at the end, this like uh, this idea that like oh the the sky is blowing up or some shit, but like the the essentially what the story of the song tells is that like is this whole story of like everything is going wrong what is going on why why does everybody around me like believe or is believing these are crazy things the world is ending and nobody gives a shit uh and like everybody is like acting like there's all these different things and then like this person goes up to like the king or like the president or whatever and like conf confronts him and then like um I don't remember what 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 way how, like what way the story went anymore but I don't know if if the the actual sky or like something was blowing up right or if the actual authoritarian figure was saying that it was right and then by the end of the song like the actual person who was like supposed to be singing which was like supposed to be you know like the normal person even they themselves starts questioning like wait is it blowing up is the sky blowing up because that's that's what happens like at some point like you go like propaganda becomes more and more crazy and conspiracy theories get crazier and crazier to a point where you're like when if when you have like this sort of moment of like clarity you're like what the fuck what the fuck is going on like recently with the uh, last episode we talked about the heat wave right we talked about the the yep. fires and uh that week <laughs> or the, the week chinese before. death lasers I'm exactly sorry. Yeah, that's what i'm going to talk oh about is, is the, the the chinese death lasers this idea that the fires in in uh, Maui were, were were happened because that China you know the the relation between China and America is not great right now, and that it was China doing you know space lasers to try to burn Maui like how in the way the the first idea was that it was the Chinese it was the Jews like how how completely out of touch and how unbelievably yeah. brainwashed must you be that to believe that these you know like these uh global warming issues are being caused by uh chinese death lasers for like space lasers or some shit like that is insane and, it, and it's and it's worrying to me and it's something that we talked about in the last episode it's worrying to me and alpha and just generally to Paul time to, that we see these issues and that 10 years ago if you would tell us or if you would tell the uh, like a normal person like that these were actual ideas or or, or, or things that politicians and these public uh media figures were talking about you would you would laugh because you would say that that's not true that is unbelievable you like, must be high like the type of shit that trump was saying 2016 looks chill right now right yeah it makes oh yeah let's put some uh bleach in our veins to cure covid like there's sh okay that's a little more recent but there's certain shit that like I remember Trump, Trump saying in 2016 or before 2016 when he was like running for president the first time that back then that shit sounded insane. But compared to the shit that he says now and the other conservatives around that are, you know, that's uh, surround him say these days, makes the stuff that he used to say back then almost tame, right? Almost like, I mean, of course, they were still were normal, but like it almost makes it feel less crazy somehow. That's how bad it's been getting yeah. lately. And the and the issue is that because of social media and you know and, and the internet propaganda can propagate even faster, and it's it's horrible. Shit is not good. <laughs> Shit is not good right now. Um, and yeah. yeah, it's 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 terrifying to see all these different uh, like seeing how often you know and how easy it is for misinformation to spread. How easy it is for these crazy uh stories to you know to to propagate through you know the the most niche of communities and the worst thing is when for example me and alpha who are still students when we're in water school and we suddenly start hearing our classmates talking about it and the way that they talk about it it's very clear that they're not talking about this because they actually know anything about it because like me and alpha are very aware of this because we ourselves consume this this type of content because we're masochists or whatever um and we sort of enjoy quote unquote watching it more of like a, as a morbid curiosity and kind of learning what's going on in the world but our friends like or at least my from my side they i know that they have absolutely no interest in this type of shit they do not they couldn't give less of a fuck because most people don't let's be honest and they themselves i hear them sometimes talking about this shit and the way that they talk about it, it's very clear they're not talking about it out of a, a place of knowing what they're talking about they're talking about this because their parents talked about it and they're clearly like just passing like the information that they got from their parents down to um 
you know, to them, right? The parents are telling them and then they talk about it at school. And it's crazy the type of shit I'll, I'll hear sometimes because I clearly can tell that they have no idea what they're talking about. And that when they um, talk about these different things, it's like very, um, how do I talk, how do I explain it? It's like, I, mean, I don't, I don't want to use the term wishy-washy again, but it, it's like, it's not, it's not a, like, there's no roots to what they're saying, right? And they're like doing what they've been fed. Yeah. They like, don't process what they're being told, which is the most important parts of trying to analyze information. Like, right. You are familiar with the Donning Kruger effect, right? Uh, I, again, I've, I, you know, I know these things, but I don't, I couldn't give less of a fuck what their names yeah, are. I'm gonna give you like a, a small rundown, and you're gonna remember immediately. Uh, the less someone knows about a certain topic, the more convinced they are that they know a lot about that topic, oh, yeah. because the amount of stuff that they know is small in comparison to the whole stuff that there is to know yeah. but they don't know enough about the topic to know that there is still an ocean of information that they aren't aware that exists yeah that's, that's imagine for example you hear of a disease you do a wikipedia search and yeah. you think oh i know about this disease and then you spend five more minutes looking at like the different links that are in the pages and how much information you can't understand. And then you have a small idea of how much there is still to know. The problem with, with right now is that people think they are entitled to know everything and that they will try to trace down every single fact that they think will help the case and completely dismiss everything else. Also, we are in a time where challenging information is incredibly easy just by saying, no, I didn't say that, or no, I didn't do that. It's in the information you trace on everything that is on the internet. I don't trust on everything that it's in, on the internet. That was on the internet, right? Yeah, of course it's on the internet. It couldn't be me saying it. Or even, oh, that point that you found from a research paper that was published on the internet. Do you believe on everything that is on the internet? Yeah, it's it's a very like hardest thing to combat, and you see that in a lot of like debates yeah. and like debate lords, which is not something that I I, I don't I don't really like debates because ninety percent of the times they're not they're pointless, you know, just point, pointless screaming matches, sort of, uh, just uh, dick size measuring contest, um, and I, I you see that a lot where like people like like somebody will say like oh I have these these uh, usually what happens is the right wing person says some unbelievable bullshit and then the left wing yeah. person goes yeah that's bullshit here is the the facts to prove it and then the right wing person will go yeah but where did source? you but where did you get that and they're like yeah i got it from this source but they'll say why do you believe that are you sure that that's true and they just go on this like just like this back and forth of like no uh no uh no uh it's like it gets you see, nowhere my point is valid because it confirmates my way of my view of the world yours is idiotic because it challenges my way of viewing the world therefore yeah. you are wrong and so it's it's very hard to to fight uh you know propaganda and shit because then like Every time you also try to disprove these things, there's always uh, the other side, which always tries to disprove your, you know, your proof, right? Your, 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 your sources, your actual research with the exact same sort of way that you're doing it, right? It's like, it's kind of like taking the reversed, like of what you're trying to do and do it on, they do it themselves on you. It's very hard to explain, but it's, it's annoying because like, it's not really something that is easily compatible um on like you know in a debate or anything but it, it's it's yeah uh, that's why I, honestly i don't i don't like i don't like debates i do think that like debates between two people who are very equally aligned can be very um uh can be very positive uh i think that's it's quite also fun like me and alpha like we are agree on like 99 percent of stuff there's like some situations i think mostly when it comes to like jail stuff like jail times and stuff like that that we slightly disagree on some situations yeah. but like it's still like i feel like when we debate me and alpha debate stuff it's still very um it's uh what's the word um constructive yeah sort of like it's not, i might call you a stupid moron but i'm not 
I'm not, I don't mean it unless I do, but although uh, like usually like the issues like that me and Alpha sort of face, which is something that is very clear in our in our uh, po previous blogs, uh, fuck podcasts. I mean, why do I keep making this weird mistake? Uh, is that like I'm a very uh, rational person. Like I'm a very like uh, in some situations a little too much, but uh, I'm not very like my my opinions and like sort of like ideals and shit like that are not very much based off of like right. I, not very based. I'm not, I don't feel, fuck you. Uh, I feel <laughs> like I feel this thing. So therefore this must be validated whilst like alpha is very much like a, Oh, I see a person I don't like. I'm going to murder them. I mean, there is, I, 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 I do have uh, I wrong, a terrible though? habit of, uh, of flying off the rail. Yeah. Like alpha is the type of guy who like somebody will like this, this is based on true facts. Like Alpha will be like somebody will say some shit about his family, right? Which is valid. Like it's it's you shouldn't like like so people attacking your family is not cool. Not something you should ever do because it's you know you don't know what is happening in their personal lives. It could be you know yeah. damaging them. It's something that's no no bad. It's a no no. Don't do it. Uh, but like somebody will attack Alpha's family and he will go crazy. He will he will plan war crimes to do on you. And I'll just go, I. And I'll move on with my life. So <laughs> it's, I don't do not care. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Like obviously, everybody's different. Everybody handles everything differently. And of course, that's always going to reflect in your in your uh, in your opinions, in your ways you. of being. Uh, but it's also like I don't know. It's it's also of course it's it's good to have um, debates in a way. It's very good to like sort of um, to have healthy debates. But also, but having debates in the sense of like trying to flex on the other person uh, trying to be there like no i'm better than you is never you know it's never good it never really gets anywhere and by the end of it you're only going to feel frustrated uh because you're unless the other person is really like bad at debating you'll never really feel like oh yeah i got i got out of there in a really good in a really good state right uh that's very rare situation um but yeah i don't know uh yeah i remember that one time we got in a in a philosophy class, we were, I think it was a uh, free will, and uh, it's a part of a our subject. You to try to understand the different theories that tackle the problem of free will. You have the the one that says there's free will, the one that says that there isn't, everything is determined, and the one that is like the middle of the world that says, yo, the thing is determined, but you have free will, uh, which is not as idiotic as it sounds. I'm just shortening it. And our teacher began that by tackling free will. And then most of the class, after being questioned, said, yeah, I don't believe in free will. And she just said, okay, why? And I've never felt so hopeless while in a debate. <laughs> it was awful. I was destroyed. Emotionally like, or? <laughs> emotionally. It was, it felt hopeless because we were trying to debate someone that had all the loopholes and had the entire knowledge that we lacked to try and deal with the situation. And half of the class left saying, you know what? Free will might actually be a thing, <laughs> which is really dangerous because it shows that if you have the right amount of charisma, you might just change people's minds. Yeah. Uh, it was it was scary. That class was scary. Like um, I've I've only had like there was not this uh, last uh, school year, but the school year before that, uh, two thousand and twenty one to two thousand twenty two. My class yeah. randomly had these debates, and uh, for some reason, it was mostly about abortion. And I heard the most appalling shit imaginable. Uh, from, oh, spill the tea. From stuff like, oh, uh, women, uh, like women who are sleeping around deserve to get pregnant as a as a sort of uh, punishment. punishment, punishment, uh, th their their behavior. Um, to stuff being like, yeah, like uh, this little bean, this little fucking embryo is a baby with 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 its life. You know the usual. Uh, pro-life bullshit, which I'm like, you, you, you have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but it was, uh, it was actually kind of on a more positive note. Uh, the person who said that, uh, that exact thing about, you know, that like uh, women who sleep around, that they, that they deserve to, you know, get pregnant as a, as a punishment, and that they don't deserve to get an abortion. 
uh, I recently talked to that same person about that. Um, and actually they had a way better opinion, uh, these days. Uh, and I actually had like a very like positive, a very great debate with them, like explaining my view, explaining why, why, like why I see abortion. And I actually had these moments, uh, which is always, these moments are always great to see in a person that's more conservative than you is when the person, when you're talking to this person and they take like this small pause, it's like, it's, it's a very, I don't, I don't know if there's like a term for it, but it's like this pause of like, huh. I hadn't thought yeah, about like, that. Oh, I might have been wrong about this. Like uh, this pause of like where you see the person kind of like looking off into like the to the abyss and just going like and like huh. taking this and like shrugging it like it'd be like, uh, you know, it kind of got a point. You know what I mean? Like that's always great. Like it, those moments are always great. Obviously, I I've, live for those moments. I've always I've also seen like uh, people having those moments and then taking the worst possible sort of uh, like to, to have the worst takeaway from that. Uh, being yeah. like, I mean, you got a point, but uh, fuck you, you're still wrong. It's like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> huh? <Yeah. laughs> like, how the hell? The what, no. what do you mean? <laughs> but uh, it's it's great. Yeah, it's always that's what I mean. Like, it's always great to have uh, healthy debates. It's always good to have debates with your friends and stuff like that. Mostly when it's friends that aren't too educated about this stuff. Because if you, in my opinion, it's kind of weird to do this, but I still feel like it's good to do this. When it's when you have friends that aren't as passionate about pol uh, politics and about all these different things, uh, it's great to tell them about this stuff. And I've also noticed that in almost all my friends, even though they aren't you know, as interested as me in Alpha and they, they don't yeah. go out there looking for this stuff, when you do talk about it, they do seem to be fascinated about it. Because usually the reason they, this kind of happens is because since you are like um, this, around the same age as them, you hang out with them, you're friends with them, they sort of feel more of like a, it's more of like, it's like more tangible to them, right? It's like old guys spewing stuff yeah, on the like, TV screen. Usually the, a lot of the re reasons like people don't get into politics is because it's seen as like this scary thing that like you do when you're older, right? This like sort of like complex thing. And of course, yeah, yeah politics is complex, but it's not as complex as people think about it. It's very much, it's very childish in some situations, honestly. Uh, it's just like, it's, very much the type of shit that you know, like two children uh, like that disagree would have, but just like just putting fancy names to them, uh, to the different situations in my opinion. Um, but it's it's always great to see like I like my friend group at school. Like most people, like none of them really have any interest in politics or anything. But it's very common for when you know they'll sitting down asking me stuff, all these different things, explaining asking me how to explain how certain stuff works. Um, because in reality, most people do have interest, interest in these, in these things. That's kind of why I wanted, I've been wanting to do politics time too, is because I, I understand that a lot of people look at political stuff and they see it as like this super huge, like scary thing that it's like, not again, as I said, it's like not a very tangible thing. It's not something that they can sort of, uh, understand because it's a very, it's very complex, right? Scary scary uh but sorry <laughs> but yeah but like but most people when it's when you know you take uh politics you know you kind of explain everything in a very calm and collective manner when it's it's put in a, in a way that it's like in in wording that they can understand easily digestible yeah like most people will see that and are like oh okay i understand that now that actually doesn't seem that complicated and i kind of have a whole new view about this and that's well, once again the most important thing is just it's not putting these in their minds it's just Yo, this is my opinion on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I never. I'm right. This is why people disagree, etc. I've never once been like, oh, this is why this has to be this way, and any other way is wrong. Obviously, I'm not going to be here and be like, yeah, I'm going to explain capitalism to my friends and then be like super like okay about it. Like, no, I'm going to explain how it's. I mean, if I explain slavery, I'm going to say, yeah, this is why this is wrong, and fuck you if you disagree yeah, with me. But like, it's it's always like it's always positive to like show like oh for example what i've done before is like oh this is how capitalism works this is how socialism works or this is how communism works you know but usually i explain the three th I things and it's like um this is how capitalism works it's based off of, off of these values this is the the main premise of it it's it's that you know you know we're focusing on the the focusing on the the sort of higher ups focusing on the the richer people it's it's this idea that if the the if the the bosses and all these different people have a lot of wealth that that wealth will eventually trickle down into the workers into the 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 people <laughs> bullshit then um 
socialism is exactly the opposite is that workers uh, they own the 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 you know they they own what they they do they own the their their work essentially uh and it's the workers who you know dictate uh the values of the projects is what dictate how much they they should earn etc they are essentially they're you know the workers together they're a collective and they are the ones who are in, who are in power because at the end of the day they are the ma the majority and they are the ones who actually are important in a you know work environment because without them there is no work environment um and Based. the idea is that yeah and the idea is that if there is you know if everybody is in power then the the wealth will be you know uh, equally distributed and everybody will be happy and there's no one per person hoarding the the wealth then communism is just going hey fuck fuck working fuck uh <laughs> fuck working fuck wealth fuck wealth like, fuck ec what, ec what is personal gain what is personal wealth it's like fuck what the economy things? there's no need for money let's just all help each other like when somebody needs lettuce we go grow a lettuce and we give it to them like it's it, it's a very com like communism comes from the concept of community that's where the name comes from in case you have ever wondered i think it's pretty obvious i'm just fucking around here but uh it's this idea of like communitarism which it's just the communism without the extra steps but it's like yeah it's just like living in a community where you know people are you know how, where there's no this idea of like yeah needing to work where you can just do your own thing just chill relax man and just be you know loving and shit and obviously then every half half pass stalin i'm sorry <laughs> well, what? and then there's always obviously the fucker is like yeah but like communist china is communist and the uh, the uh, soviet union was communist so like well i hear someone say china chill there's you gotta remember there's something called authoritarianism which is an, a whole different issue which is yeah holy shit which is like forcing uh these things right it's like being like oh you want to you want to have you know your own car fuck you kill yourself you don't own that shit i own that shit and if kill you it. and if you don't and if you don't if you don't uh work and contribute to the to the uh to the nation if you don't contribute to the people then you will deserve nothing and you'll be you know uh, do all these yeah. things and then if anybody tries to which is something that happened in china i just learned apparently there was like this huge like insane sort of like slaughter that happened to like um that happened to fuck what's the what's the called uh to um uh, not homeowners i don't know fuck it's not it's the, oh, the people who like rent houses the like um uh, landlords so landlords like there's like this thing uh, like a couple like a couple decades ago where like they just got a bunch of like landlords in china that just like massacred them and shit like that because they were like <laughs> Because they were, and they were like being massacred by the people who lived in their in their like apartments and shit like that because they were like saying like you like you're constantly like undermining me you're constantly treating me like shit you're putting me in horrible conditions there's like this whole thing uh which I was like holy shit what the fuck <laughs> okay uh did not expect this to I didn't know this Remember was a kids thing. the Chinese do know how to riot but it was like it was an interesting I, I saw this in the context of like how usually like for example people like bob uh bob saget not bob saget bob Iger. wait who's bob saget i don't remember who bob saget is right now can you google that Me either okay uh, but yeah bob Iger, for example the the ceo of uh of disney like what he's truly bob saget uh photographer oh what bob saget what the fuck anyways he's uh... in 2022 oh I have no idea who he is then. So, anyways, I'll, I'll look at that after the, uh, the podcast. But for example, the the issue that like most like big executives have, right? These like people who are like the owners of companies, is that they are scared that uh, that their workers will, you know, one day just be like, you know what? I mean, I've had enough of this bullshit, and just actually own uh, like own you know, what so they do, because that's the thing is like that's why unionizing is so important. That's why um you know workers having power and having rights is so important and that's why for example when it comes to now the whole hollywood thing why pardon me why it's it's like such so apparent uh why unionizing is important is because if every worker unionizes there is like they own the power right they have the the rights to be able to control what they um to what they create and the reason why the you know riots are important mostly when you have a uh, in a capitalist system is because 
usually what that allows for them to do, which is what you know currently they're trying to do uh, when it comes to the Writers Guild of America, when it comes to SAG-AFTRA, is that the the the, the two unions are trying to um, essentially get a deal, right? They're trying to uh, find a uh, a compromise with the the production companies that make both of them happy. Uh, obviously, that's not ideal, in my opinion. Uh, that is very much, uh, you know, capitalist type of bullshit where it's like coming up with this sort of compromise to something that, you know, you shouldn't have to compromise on. Yeah. Uh, because the reality is that somebody like Bob Iger does not deserve all that money he's he's hoarded in the last years. Uh, and a lot of the writers, a lot of the, the, the creators behind uh, these huge productions, which have made millions, uh, they are the ones who deserve it because they're the ones who made it possible. Um, and as a person who loves writing and loves uh, all these different creative things regarding cinematography, et cetera, uh, you know, regarding the inter inter entertainment world, it is crazy to me that I would work on something that I'm so passionate about and that I would get nothing in return. That sounds like the most, that sounds like the biggest bullshit imaginable. I'm so, I'm so sorry, but, um, unbased. What do you mean it's unbased? I don't want to be, I want my shit to, no, to no, 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 no. Like the idea of being a corporate bitch isn't based. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not going to be a corporate bitch. I'm nobody's bitch. But Except my wife, I don't, have, I don't have, I don't even have a girlfriend. Uh, I have, my wife is imaginary, <laughs> like my sanity. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's like, voices. The voices. But yeah, it's like, that's the thing is like, if you, but the, the, sad, the sad thing is that there's a lot of people who like being corporate bitches. I, I will never understand that. Yeah, uh, the corporate cocksuckers. It's it's that shit is crazy to me, but it's yeah, it's like it's for example, there's a lot of already like a bunch of studios who have agreed to the union, um, uh, like uh, they're they agree to their terms. They, they, no, they agree to their terms, right? Uh, like well, how much they wanted to be paid, how what you know the 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 contracts, everything, and they they agreed to it, and they just went back to filming, and everything is fine, right? Yeah, they but these are corporate bitches. But, but there are these are smaller, um smaller production companies like a24 which is you know known for many great films uh and you know like these smaller indie indie production t uh companies which of course they they have a lot more to they have a lot to lose of course uh but the reality is that they're also not as like corporate as for example disney is uh which yeah. is very much like a corporation before a, a production company or a, or a company that is truly that actually cares about storytelling. Disney does not give a fuck about storytelling. They care about getting it about Money. you know about pre, uh, pleasing their shareholders. And in a, in a, a small production company like A twenty four, for example, cares much more about actually creating fun, you know, engaging stories. Uh, and they understand that if they agree to the 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 terms of you know the actors and the writers that they can you know just continue production they can keep creating great stories and they can make the same amount of money or more maybe than before because of uh, the reality is that the more people are paid the happier they are the more you know uh, pr productive they will, they, are. they will they will be the more people that will be willing to work for these co production companies the more they can also produce more so it's 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 like almost a no brainer in my opinion to like accept yeah. these terms because the reality is that there has been many situations where you know uh, these corporations are much more um, you know much more focused on pleasing uh, their workers instead of their shareholders, etc. And in almost every scenario, in almost every situation, has that always played out amazingly? It's always been a huge uh, uh, gain for the workers, and th that company then started producing more than ever, and everything was always great. So it's uh you know like obviously it's it's great you know that w these uh, unions exist. In fact, uh, fun fact, uh, something that I don't think you Alpha have followed on. But for example, I think that it's in the l next couple of weeks, maybe in the in the next, I think it's in the next two weeks. At some point, I think it's on the twenty fifth of August, uh, that uh, a bunch of animation studios, when it comes to like CGI and stuff, are going to vote on unionizing. Let's um, go. We uh, do. We do love ourselves some CGI artists. I believe that that is uh, one of like the people who like do like MCU uh, VFX and like CGI and like special effects stuff, right? Which has been horrible these past few. Yeah, they, they've been they've been like they've been basically like slaves I to them. I wonder why. And you can and you can see oh, that reflected shit. in the quality of the films. Like they have not been great in the last couple of years. Uh, like. <laughs> 
Thor Love and Thunder. Holy yeah. shit. But it's it's great. I do hope they unionize. I hope they unionize because it would be a huge shift in the entertainment uh in the ter- entertainment uh industry because currently VFX and, and CGI is something that um that uh, production companies are heavily uh investing in or heavily uh not investing in heavily relying on because back in the day you know cgi for example used to be a vanity it used to be something that was fun something that you know we used to you know most films didn't have and used to be this thing that like you used to make something that was spectacular something that was uh, a fantasy into a reality uh you have for example the terminator right that would have been yeah. impossible with that cgi but nowadays cgi is not even used like that anymore and the cgi is now used as a We'll fix it in post type of situation where you'll film something. We use that, CGI that... to cut costs a lot of the time right now. Yeah, you and have so... this huge explosion. Uh, fuck practical. Do it with CGI. Yeah, because it's like it's also because currently, since uh, VFX artists and all these people aren't unionized and they have no, but they have rights. But you know, as workers, they have little, very little rights, and they have le- very little uh, sort of. Um, ownership over their work they also paid very poorly and they were put through horrendous uh overtime and working hours and so if these people can actually uh unionize suddenly uh after uh like production uh costs like after production what fuck what's the term that's not the term uh post production yeah post production hey. uh stuff will become suddenly way more expensive and the issue right now is that it's much cheaper to fix it in post and actually doing a good filming session uh, practically. For example, the best example of this is the Flash movie, uh, where, for example, <laughs> uh, commonly uh, in the past years when you had uh, uh, scenes where an actor played two characters, usually one of those like twins, for example, right? Um, they used to film bo- like the scene twice with the actor doing both characters. Uh, but for example, with the Flash, what they did is they went like, no, let's not do that. Let's not film because then that would be basically filming the film twice, right? They had to film twice as many scenes to then composite them together to fill, to form one scene. So instead of uh, filming two scenes, then compositing them to one, what they did is they got a stunt double and filmed both. Um, they filmed both. Uh, they filmed one scene with both with both the with the actor and its and his stunt double. And then just deep faked, the face. and then yeah. deep faked Ezra Miller's yeah. face onto uh, onto their uh, double onto their doppelganger, not the doppelganger, with their into their um, stunt Stunt-dub. double. Which there's a lot of situations where you can clearly tell that there's something absolutely wrong with Ezra's face, and it looks really shit. And it's like, what the? I was yeah. I was thinking because I was thinking to myself. I watched this film in, in theater, and I was thinking to myself, I could have swear that like. A couple of years ago, I've I've already in the last couple of de- like the last decade decade the decade I've seen films where actors have played two characters where you know you twins YouTubers do that yeah and it's like it's no, never it's, like- it's never looked bad why is it suddenly that it looks bad now and then I looked into the production of the of the Flash and I was like oh shit because they did deep fakes yeah and it looks like also, shit talking about deep fakes uh, we can lightly touch upon the good old dead actor problem. Uh, right. yeah, you're like, yeah, that's one of the that things was... that's, that's one of the things that was, uh, in the terms of, uh, yeah, the yeah. SAG after, uh, strikes is because they want to make sure that, you know, uh, that actors are the ones who own their own image. They're the ones who own their voices yeah. and that, Imagine after, just and that being post called more... to do a role after you died because you signed a contract that you yeah. didn't believe in. Like post-mortem, you you know, a, a, a production company can just take uh your 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 body right can take your image and then yeah. use it on whatever it's it's not it's not morally correct it just isn't it's it's like you have no control over um yeah. what your imagine if one of those cities just like turned into pornography and then just just they just grab that actor yeah it's it's or or For maybe example. or maybe they can sell the, those those rights to, yeah. to other to other companies and then they could use it however the they want theater. So it's it's very terrifying that you know like these actors have to not only you know they now have to sell or have to give you know these production companies their their existence or like their 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 beings it's terrifying but yeah yeah it's something that will uh, that I hope that uh, they can finally 
get um, fixed and that we won't have to worry about it in the future. But uh, And with that out of the way, it's been one hour and nine minutes. And with that out of the way, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, we have to talk about the uh the the patreon um we do this every episode and we always have to talk about patreon because it's uh, a good way to support us uh and of course if you support us you'll also get some goodies in return and the main thing that you'll get in return is access to our uh private discord uh on our private discord you can t- talk to me in alpha uh you can do random bullshit with us uh yeah you can uh you know just talk about whatever you want or you can for example join our debate uh channel and debate uh, other people there or us or whatever uh and then most importantly which is what is related to the podcast is that you can be part of the podcast q a so you can there you can submit questions and then in this section of the podcast at the end of the podcast uh, each week, we will try to answer your questions as best as possible. And it's a, l- a little fun way for you to interact with us and to also see your questions get featured in an episode, which I think is, you know, I think it's always fun for uh, for our supporters to be able to do that. And uh, without all the way, that's that's it. That's uh, Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this yeah. has been fun. A uh, very weird podcast because we weren't as well prepared as other podcasts because it's something we're recording very much in a out of sync situation which we haven't done before so apologies for that um, it's always fun right but uh yeah it's always fun but yeah uh, that's it's there's some cool stuff in the horizon for poly time some stuff that uh, me and alpha have been talking about some stuff which will change some stuff some new stuff that will be coming and uh yeah well uh anything you want to say alpha nah, just be good people have a great day and uh with that i'll see you all in the next episode bye everybody goodbye